Good afternoon and happy Friday, December 4th, 2020. Here we go. Recap of what went on today. In chemistry, uh, we had a qu uh, quiz, uh, heat versus temperature, that everyone took. Um, we also looked at our blocks today and in our jam board, we were able to um, take a look at what would happen uh, with our uh, two different blocks and we were able to kind of come up with some ideas about that that we discussed. So I'll pull that up right here. And uh, we also had some ideas about um, how they worked. So take a look here. So we had our uh, blocks that we um, took down or we we did a demonstration of our two blocks, put in an ice cube on each one of those. And then we uh, asked our students, um, what do you think was happening? Some great ideas for that. So some good good thinking and a lot of good thinking in terms of using what we um, learned about yesterday to um, apply that to today. So that was awesome. And then, like I said, uh, we were able to pull off that actually the simplest one here was the most uh, realistic in terms of understanding how uh, heat works and what was going on with those blocks. A lot of our students still think that coldness exists. And again, we're trying to get them to understand that cold does not exist, that really it's a movement of heat and some materials move heat better than others. Next week, we will start to um, wrap up this unit in terms of conductivity. Uh, we'll get into this, uh, you know, Monday, we're going to work, uh, look at how heat moves by using uh, different uh, some water, cold water, hot water, and room temperature water. I've asked the students to sort of have that prepared if possible. That way we can um, actually demo demonstrate that uh, together and we can have a better understanding of how that works. We'll finish up and hopefully be able to explain why Flick's tongue is sticking to that pole. And then we'll move into specific heat and heat capacity. and uh, Learn a little bit about how um, phase changes again can occur and we'll get into what happens when we have different substances in terms of how they can hold on to heat and so that's a totally different concept but that'll be next week. Um, again they took a quiz today and in that quiz uh, that's already been um, I've already had it's automatically graded and been emailed back to them. They are more than willing to start working on their quiz corrections if they want to. They're due next Tuesday. Uh, these quiz corrections, if you, they simply go to this document here, um, you can see here, all they have to do is copy and paste the question they missed. So they make sure you write out the entire question. Write out your incorrect answer. Again, we want to know what you wrote and what you thought. And then obviously the quiz gives you the correct answer. The key thing is in this black and green area, this is where you're going to provide evidence. You're going to try to utilize um, either something from your notes, the jam boards, or whatever you, we did to sort of reinforce again um, what is correct and why it's correct. So you'll use that evidence and be sure to provide uh, your an example. I got an example here that's actually from biology, but you know, the same thing in chemistry. You provide a good explanation, paragraph form of evidence for the correct answer, and also provide a source, uh, whatever day we discuss these things or whatever activity was utilized. Uh, plenty of tables are provided for you um, for any you know, missed questions. Uh, and again, a lot of times our quizzes will see the same questions again. So hopefully you, you correct your misunderstandings. All right. Uh, in terms of biology, okay, biology, very similar. Uh, in the biology, we uh, basically just asked them about their negative feedback loops and what was challenging for them. After grading those, I still think, well, we have a ways to go to understand uh, how they work. I know there's a lot of vocabulary with these things. Uh, I think what's important is to try to, add, you know, we need more questions. We need more questions about, hey, what is this word mean? What is, is this a controller? Is it a sensor? And so I'm seeing a lot of our students just need to probably ask some more questions about this stuff. There is a lot of medical, um, I don't want to say jargon, but terminology that sometimes gets in to this unit. And we want to make sure you understand that. So uh, with the feedback loops, a little bit challenging there. Uh, we did have a quiz today on homeostasis. And so that homeostasis quiz, again, was automatically graded and they should have received their responses back. 
Uh, and we started a lab. This lab is due Monday. This lab uh, contains a gizmos and it gives you a class code here for if you weren't, if you were absent today, you just simply have to enter that code into gizmos, which is the site is right here. Um, and then you automatically can set up an account and you can work on that lab. There's a Google doc that goes along with that. Again, this lab is due on Monday. And so we want to make sure our students get that taken care of. So I will uh, send this out to uh, those of you that are at home and I'll also put this in our recap section for both classes to make sure you know what you're doing. Um, if you got any questions, send me an email. Uh, but otherwise, have a great weekend and we'll see you all on Monday. Chemistry, be ready to do the our, our labs there with the uh, uh, how heat moves, hot hand, cold hand um, with those uh, different types of water. And uh, biologies, be ready for some possible exercise in case we want to see, how, you know, what's happening with this body temperature. And if you did your, when you do your Gizmos lab, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of that. All right, everyone, have a great weekend.